Right, 3.41. This time it appears as if the quadratic's on top, but it's not, because the bottom is the difference of two cubes. That'll factorise, and then we can split it using partial fractions, and then the top can break up and leave just the quadratic underneath. So, the first part. Factorise the denominator. That's a difference of two cubes. You know the difference of two squares. But there's also a pattern for the difference of two cubes. If you've got x cubed minus y cubed, then the factorisation is x minus y. Just like when you've got x squared minus y squared, it's x minus y times x plus y. Well, this just goes a step further. x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. Very similar. So that means for this part, that can be factorised into, so I've got 4x squared plus 2x plus 3 still, but that'll become x minus 1 and then x squared plus x plus 1 dx. Now it's just a case of using partial fractions here. I'll not continue doing this part, I'll put it over here. So splitting it into partial fractions means I could rewrite it as a over x minus 1 plus, since that's an irreducible quadratic, the discriminant of that is 1, take away 4 is negative 3, so that's not going to factorise into real factors. And we've got bx plus c, since it is an irreducible quadratic, over x squared plus x plus 1. So those two things are equal. Which means that, multiplying it out, I'll have a times x squared plus x plus 1, plus bx plus c times x minus 1, equal to, if this will still fit in, 4x squared plus 2x plus 3. I'm not sure if all that's showing. Now, it's just a case of equating the two parts. Well, I'll use a wee knockout value first of all. If x is equal to 1, well, that simplifies it. That just means that this disappears, and this part's going to be 3a, and that will equal... 4 plus 2 plus 3 is 9, which means a is equal to 3. There's the first one. <coughs> now, after that, equate the two parts. Take the x squared terms. So the x squared terms. On this side, there's ax squared, or on this side, there's bx squared, and on that side, there's 4x squared. So a plus b is 4. So if a is 3, that means b is 1. And the next easiest one to use would be equate the constant terms. X terms get a bit messy because there's three of them, A's, B's and C's, even though I know what A and B is, but the constants are simpler. Because for the constant term, I've just got one lot of A minus one lot of C. I've got A minus C equals three. Well, A is three, so C must be zero. Which means I can go back and rewrite this now. So this is equal to A was three, so it's three, over x minus 1, that's perfect, because so that's just a log, plus b is 1, so that's just x plus x over x squared plus x plus 1 dx. I think I'll just leave it all running, I could take that out just now. So I've got 3 over x minus 1 so far. Now this part, the derivative of the bottom is 2x plus 1. So I could fabricate that because I've got a single x, that's half of what I want, so I could say I've got a half of 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. And there, by inspection, I've got another log because that's half the derivative of the bottom. But now I'll need to correct it. And now I think I'll need, unfortunately, to lose my working over here. That's a shame. So, so far I've got a half of 2x is x, that was x, plus a half, so I'll have to correct that by taking away a half. So, minus a half over x squared plus x plus 1. So, that's what it's split up to now. Now, this part, well, there's a quadratic, so since it's not in a square root, that looks as if it's heading towards an inverse tan, I'll just complete that square and extract any number other than 1. So that for that I'm going to have, I'll just do it here, x squared plus x plus 1 would be x plus a half squared to generate that term, plus the 1. But that adds on a half squared, so take away a quarter. 
so that gives me three quarters. So I've got three quarters plus x plus a half squared. Now you could just put it in just now and learn the formulae for when is it one over a that repeats the a or doesn't put in the a, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to do it algebraically. I'll take the three quarters out. And if I take three quarters out, that means everything inside would then have to be multiplied by four upon three. So plus four upon three times the bracket, but I'd rather went inside the square. So the four would go inside as a two, which is handy, because two times that will make it two x plus one. And then, oh, you may well notice, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. But that's fairly obvious because if that's the derivative of that, you've got that quadratic. If you're finding its minimum turning point, you would differentiate it. You get 2x plus 1 and then equate that to 0. Another way of finding the turning point of a quadratic is to complete its square. And then in its completed squared form, the contents of the bracket will tell you when it's at its minimum. So it's no surprise that's happened over there still. I wanted to know these extra numbers. Where was it? Yes, two times that. But to put the three in, that'll have to go in as a root three squared. And then it's all right to go again. So what's this? So the integral, I know I could put those down, but it looks nice having all these bits here, doesn't it? Plus a half, I could put that half in the middle. I'll just leave it up the top there. Half of two x plus one over x squared plus x plus one. Might be neater in the middle. It's up to you. Do you want two sugars in your tea or do you just want one and then another one one later on. <laughs> That's right. Um, and for this one, I'll just leave that half on top as well. So that turns into one plus two thirds plus one over root three squared dx with this fraction three quarters, which I'll just leave underneath. And then it's all ready to go. I know they had to wait but they can all go to the party together. So this one, that's going to be 3 ln x minus 1. That's exactly half the derivative, so it's a half of ln x squared plus x plus 1. That turns back into inverse tan of 2x plus 1 over root 3. I'll have to sort out all the bits. So with a half multiplying it, <coughs> so it's a half times it, there was a three quarters in the denominator. So it's a four upon three actually multiplying it. That's the inner function is linear, that's why it worked. The inner function's got a derivative of two over root three, so I'll need to multiply that by root three upon two, dividing by two over root three plus a c, if that's showing. Then I'll well, put them together. Ah, why not? So I've got log n of that will be x minus 1 cubed times the square root of x squared plus x plus 1. Modularise it if you want. Minus, now what cancels out here? The 4 is going to knock out, that 3 is going to knock out one of the root 3s, so I'll have a root 3 underneath if you're happy with the rational denominators, and I don't mind just now, of 2x plus 1 over root 3 plus c. And that's that one done. We've come back here. Right, there it is. Right, 3.42. Now this time there's a square root, so this looks as if it's heading towards an inverse sine, but it's going to split up, so that means I'm going to have, not logs this time, but roots and an inverse sine. Right, so for 3.42, now there's a square root here, and if that happens to be the derivative of that, you could get the answer straight away because there's a very simple pattern. If you have the square root of x, the derivative is just 1 over 2 times the square root of x. It's a pattern you often remember just to save mucking about with those indices. More so, if you have the square root of some function of x, then its derivative is going to be 1 over 2 times the derivative, sorry, the square root of that, but multiplied by the derivative of it. That's the same pattern you get with logs. If you've got a function underneath and its derivative on top, it goes back to a log. If you've got a square root underneath and its derivative on top, it goes back to the square root. Apart from that fact, you'd have to have the two there. Well, this could happen here, but there's something you could do to simplify this first of all. There's a pile of fours there. Take the fours out. So what have I got? Taking all the fours out of that, I'm left with four 
minus 3x minus x squared dx <coughs> and that would have been a root so, uh, 16 inside it would be a root for multiplying it oops daisy <coughs> so that's just a 2 that can come out of fact I'll take it right out there it is that's how they are then the next thing to check is this so what exactly is the derivative of that so the derivative of the bottom would be negative 2x minus 3 well I've sort of got that I've got the negative of it so I'll put that down I'll put the neg not quite though it's a wee correction to make I've got the negative of what I want over the square root of 4 minus 3x minus x squared but I'll need to correct it to make sure I've got my original expression again so that says I've got the negative of that I've got 2x I've got the 2x it says I've got plus 3 well, I've only got 1 so I have to take off 2 to correct for that so minus 2 over this part dx so now there's two parts to it I've got the first part which is just going to go back to a square root OK with the factor. And the second part, which looks as if it's heading towards an inverse sign. So, the second part, I'll just tidy that up. What have I got? I've got negative x squared minus 3x plus 4. Take out the negative, that's an x squared plus a 3x. Let's leave the 4 separate. So it's a negative of, and that would be x plus 3 upon 2. But that would add on the square of that, which is 9 upon 4. So I'll have to take away 9 upon 4 plus 4. So altogether I've got 4 plus 9 upon 4 minus that square. And that tidies up to 25. 16 and 9 is 25 upon 4 minus that square. And there it is. That's going to be put that inside the square root. And that will be <coughs> an inverse sign. I'll just keep all this here with these signs so I can see that I've properly got the derivative on the top or a multiple of the derivative on the top and this part now what's this lot going to be well if you're happy using that pattern you could put that in straight away just now if you can remember with the a's is it 1 over a is it not 1 over a but I'm just going to take it all the way down so I'm going to take the 25 upon 4 out of that which means I'll be left with if you take out the factor 25 upon 4 then everything inside has to be multiplied by 4 over 25 and if I want to put the 4 over 25 into the square bracket, it'll go in as a 2 over 5. And 2 is handy because 2 times that is going to give me 2x plus 3. And then the 5 underneath. So that's what's going to go into the square root. So I've got the square root of 1 minus 2x plus 3 over 5 squared. The 25 upon 4 was inside the square root. But I'll take it out of the square root where it will become a 5 upon 2 and then dx I know that's down the bottom I can sort these parts out afterwards about dividing by fractions and so on in this case so I've got half of now in fact that's, that's complete so I can just go straight with the answer I don't have to split them up so I've got a half of this part here and that part there would have been that derivative so with that half being there that's just going to go back to I've got that already that's just going to go back to the square root of 4 minus 3x minus x squared the only, only alteration the only multiple being that negative so that just goes back to that part this part now I've got half of this as well well a half of the 2 is going to cancel out so I'm just left with this 5 upon 2 in the denominator so that'll be a 2 fifths that goes back to inverse sine of 2x plus 3 upon 5. That has got an inner function which is linear, otherwise we're able to do it. Its derivative is 2 upon 5, so I'm going to multiply by 5 upon 2 in the e plus c. And those bits are going to cancel out. So I've got 2 delta, just put the c to the front, so it's all nice and tidy. So I've got a c minus the square root of that part, <coughs> and minus, and that just cancels down to inverse sine of 2x plus 3 upon 5 and that's that when you're done.